Man, listen. Follow my teachers, you learn a hard lesson Anybody carry my name, no God test I fell back and gathered my senses Niggas too close, can't tell where the fences Lines fade, the older homie pressing the issue But I fade, we came together, we leave together How moms raised me, opposition got little homies That give me praises, civil war is an option I follow you on the take it. bitch about my kids and pines all in the basement The bitch hacked your phone, I'm closing on your location Praying to God, I believe a guide is but see Satan <laughs> Laughing at baptisms, I got similar patience In order to kill the flesh, you got to literally lick it They hate when I tell the truth, how you cool or you fake it? Hey yo, y'all, welcome to Man Listen Sponsored by K&M Powered by I Am Head at Hub City Studios And we, uh, man, I got a guest Came all the way from motherfucking Seattle And this bitch And I'ma just let him introduce What's your name, man? Okay, there we yeah. go. In Seattle. So we in Lake City in Seattle. 
uh, and everybody's just nice to us. And we had a, we had a different chance. Like you know what I'm saying? It's different this guy, bro. Bro, it was it was different. It was definitely like on some. We have an opportunity to be something. So, but my father, he's like a militant dude, and he's a Jehovah Witness. So man, we gotta talk about that. We, can, can I stop you right there? Mm -hmm. Just just because of the Jehovah Witness, because you know the perception. Mm -hmm. We we not going to even act like we don't know the perception. What? So the perception of Jehovah Witness, I don't even know what a Jehovah Witness is besides the fact they knock on your door and try to give you the pamphlets. What was it like growing up with your father being Jehovah Witness, and what do you believe? And I'm just that's just like kind of the sidebar to what he was already going, but I gotta know. Uh I would like it to um and I, I hope that nobody that people probably gonna be like, what the hell fam? But uh I would like it to like a Catholic with a Muslim discipline. Okay. Because I, I, I still believe in Jesus and it will definitely tear into your head, you know what I'm saying, if you if you step out of line. But <clears throat> it's like different, like you can't just go and talk to somebody in a booth and be cool. You gotta go before elders and tell them your business and then the congregation is made of a yeah, or certain, bro, it's kind of vicious, bro. You can get this fellowship and and, and Jehovah with us in the kingdom hall. If you're they call themselves the true Christian. <coughs> so if you're not like rocking, what they doing? You're not. You're not like. Oh, by the grace of Jesus. So you're like, saying there ain't no halfway. You gotta rock all the way. On my mind. So you never was. It, are you Jehovah's Witness? Mm -hmm. So it never really converted to you. I mean, it did, but I grew up and my father left. Like, yeah, I was another. I, I left. I, I was baptized as a kid, but shit changed as you start being a young man. By the time I was eleven, I was banging. Shit changed early then. Okay, so <laughs> back, in, back to six years old, you wrote the rap. Because you, you, we, we got sidetracked. <laughs> so back to six years old, your dad wrote the rap. That's when you first started rapping. Did yeah. you feel like you wanted to rap, or was just something your dad wanted you to do? My dad uh, called me, uh, quote, um, Ice Cube and MC Renz. My big brother Blue would let me uh, hear that stuff, man. He stayed across the street from us with my sister Barbie. Uh, she, oh, excuse me. She, her name is Brashante Flows, and she goes by Miss Flows. Okay. That's my sister. Um, so my big brother Blue, he stayed across the street. You know, we go over here. We ain't in Chicago no more, but he still loved Blue. So now everything he's doing is like crippling. And I'm not understanding that. Like, even at a young age, we I know what you're saying, between. because it's different now over here. It's yeah. not. Yeah. But I still know the difference between like breeds and GDs and stuff. Like, it's, like, it's like stuff that you know. You learn from school. You yeah. learn from your parents tell you, you know, how you hat to the left type shit. In Chicago, it's different. But out here, my, my, my dad was getting clean and sober. My mom was getting clean and sober. And they were trying to teach us other stuff. They still had the militant side to them. But my, my big brother, he was like on some guys. Because he was older than you. Mm -hmm. How old was he when he came here? Blue. You are almost 40 now, so yeah, he, he was. He, so he, was already, time, he was already in 12 and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, he was already, he was he already was ready. He was who he was. Yeah. He, was he was probably, he probably tasted a little bit of the life in Chicago. Yeah. So after that, you just continued rapping? Yeah, so I, I started rapping. And, uh, so the education is the key, was my father's alternative, like to run a rap. Because before then, we still had this, like, the. The record players, you know what I'm saying? I was listening to Michael Jackson and and and, and Marvin Gaye and. So you was listening to some actual real. I was, music. Bro, I was on some other. I was listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire for fun. It was my choice. Dad, can we listen to this one? Like that was all we were like exposed to, because um, while my parents were battling their addiction, they were like really off that, like trying to get us on the witness side. Put us in ministry school and everything. Oh, yeah, so they're trying to change you guys so, up. Like, yeah, you know? And even and, and, and if you think about it, too, according to, like, the witnesses, even then, even when they let us listen to that, uh, what you call secular music, it was still outside of that shit. So it wasn't going to really stick with me. But, yeah. but back to the to the music, yeah, bro, I just started rapping and really wanted to be, like, good enough to, to, to do it. 
And LL Cool J, by the time I had a, a serious understanding for what rapping was, LL Cool J was like, That was who you was like. Come on, dog. Nobody else, everybody else didn't make sense to me back then. LL made sense to me. That was a nigga who you was looking up to. He was big, buff, dog. He had all the little females. Kept his pants legs rolled up so I didn't have to look like a weirdo like the crisscrosses. <laughs> I could have just rolled my legs it's up, different you know me, and been cool. I was so about Let's fast forward a little bit of time because we're not finna talk about I'm from six years old. That's just too much. Yeah. But we gonna go. We definitely gonna go to when you say you start banging around eleven. Yeah. Because I feel like that's this is like another pivotal moment. Yeah. So was there a, before you answer that question? Was there a gap between the music? When you started banging, or that's when the music started really going. Nah, ain't no music, man. No, like that's no, 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 no. There, there was no gap. No the gap. Music, my mama. Seen, so the music kept going. My father seen. My mama seen. You know, they had us seen. I told you I was listening to record players, and then when the time rap came into my life, you don't. You yeah, don't put it down. down. Yeah, you okay, don't, okay. You put it down. Man. Okay. So you yeah, said once you picked it up, you didn't put oh, it. Ah, come on, fam. Okay, so Val. Yeah. You, you're why you start banging? Did that change your music, or did it change your like? It changed your energy towards music since you got your energy and other shit. Uh. Now that you're looking back as a grown man at that age, can you say? I could say at that age, I would, if you heard my raps at that age, you would call me what they, uh, they say now, uh, emo. Okay. The world is dying. We're all blind. The black man needs to rise. I hate my life. You rap about that day. every day. Yeah, I'm serious, bro. This is this is. I, I know you. Bro. Look, your first. If I'm not mistaken, was you, you was the, you was is was your first deal, sporting life. Yeah. Bow. Look, I know my history, motherfucker. I know that shit. So I remember when I first heard of you was because of my nigga Spaceman. I I went to AI with Spaceman. Bow. Let me give you guys some history, right? This is just real interesting, right? Thanks. So I went to school with Space, and he he was rapping with this. Is that who is the is the other nigga the big black nigga that used to rap? Is that Mike Mack? No. Okay. I, this whole time I've been speculating if that was him. I'm like, is that him? We gonna have to find out who that was in a minute. But I remember that uh, like when Spaceman was first started rapping with y'all, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm out here working with this working life. It was like he was still going to AI at the time, and. Uh, He's putting niggas on to you. I already heard about you just through the break line, but this is like where I'm really getting put on to you because like, this is a nigga who's fucking with you. So, Bow, that's your first deal? How Yo, was so, well, Niggas was moving too. I thought you niggas was famous. I gotta say, Sport Life Days, I had to be what? Eighth, ninth grade? Who's that, yeah? So I wasn't officially signed to like the ninth grade, but I started rocking with them in the eighth grade. And before then, I was in, uh, I would say I was in the seventh, sixth, sixth, seventh grade, I was trying to deal with uh, what they call 206 entertainment. I know what that is. That was, you know what I'm saying? You was trying to fuck with them? Yeah, he was my, my man. Uncle Hunchy, he's super dope, he's a great producer, uh, shaky, he's a great businessman, but there was a lot of money in the CD at that time. They was not thinking about rap. You feel me? Yeah, so, it was, so you had to go elsewhere. <laughs> so <laughs> Sport Life was serious for real. So Sport Life, and you guys had to, you guys had to move. So Sport Life, how many projects you drop over there? No, did you drop a project before Sport Life? What everybody's talking about, it wasn't a drop, bro. Like it was a real life blank CD. Like you know what I'm saying? We pressed him up. We were just giving them all out. Right. Yeah, that's what the, the first, the very first anything you might have heard from me. So that's before Sporting Life. Yeah, the, the, that's like Sporting Life, but it was it like. It is Sporting Life, but it's Yeah, Sporting. but it's like before it, so that, that doesn't really count. But no, my first release is uh, The Only Forgotten Son. And. Um, when is that? When did that drop? That dropped 2007. 2007. 2007, but it was like just songs from 2006. Like it was crazy, All right? I had like probably two new songs on there. Okay. Um, so it was just kind of like to give the, give the people some music. Yeah, no. I, I, well, it was just me crafting the project for that long. Like I had you finally just put a project. Out. Bro, I had 
Vitamin D, K Steels. You the BZ2, on that first project? Yeah, BZ2000 at my disposal. These are just all mentors of people I have, like, to help me know what to do and what not to do. We had Central Intelligence. We had Maniac B, bro. We had, we had just too many. I had Tilla Voorhees, you feel me? Fast, my yeah, bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had, I had hella help, like, to make sure that I wasn't sounding corny. And then we were so young, you know, niggas wanted me to do some, like, they wanted me to be like Nelly. <laughs> Hold on, is that so? Is that that? This is a this is a pro, niggas probably don't even know that. That's what that. That's what niggas wanted you to kind of do at first, like. Nah, real talk. We needed to make like certain like type of joints that was like. That's and, why. And you feel it was real Nellyish. No, no, no. I don't feel like everything niggas was doing was Nellyish. But I feel <laughs> like the, the songs I got assigned to was Nellyish, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they never came out. <laughs> You're stupid. So I got a song too. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like a a way to appeal because it was a different type of party music back then. You know what I'm saying? But it's not really that far, but it really is though. It's 2018 right now. Like, yikes! And that was 2007. That's like that's like 2000. Yeah, 2005 to 2007. You guys, you guys did hella shows too. I yeah, see so you niggas on every. That's why I thought. Like I really thought you niggas was famous. I said that niggas is famous. Like I was just telling. I was like, that niggas is famous, man. Like the way you see a move. Like so you you had. So it sounds like you've always had some type of professionalism around your career, surrounding. Like you've always had some type of guidance from the game. Um, not until I got to sport Not well, I had. I had. I had musical influence. I'm not. Well, I'm not saying the musical influence. I mean, as far as like. The, at least a sense of direction. You didn't, you didn't get that till sport life. No, I was just a rap. I was a battle rapper, bro. I was a real life. Go to Westlake. Go to Tacoma Balls. Go to Alderwood Ball. Uh, go to Puyallup Fairs. Go to the Pine of Seattle's. Go to the Texas Tacomas and end up with fights. Cause I would always be trying to battle niggas. So that was your you jump start with battle. Yeah, bro. Okay, see, so. But that's like, so So I love writing, right? I was doing some real, like, whatever song I structured, it sounded like a, a, a bad interpretation of the autobiography of Malcolm X. You know? It was really dark, but it was really, like, for the people type. I was always like that. And mm -hmm. then I was like, you know, I'm gangbanging, you know, it's kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a little, it messes with you. At least, at least I knew early on, you know what I mean? But it was messing with me to to really be talking like that and feeling like that and then be out here in the street. So I started battling the niggas. And I think the last battle I ever took was, uh, I, I was walking through Westlake, bro, and uh, I ran into San Antonio Bandanas. Hey, son. That's the last battle. Bro, he, he just he just made me feel like I should not. This wasn't the form that I should be. <laughs> this is not the direction that I should be going in. Your career. I should probably yeah. sell dope or something. Cause this nigga, <laughs> he really, he really just he, he got on me. So uh after that, then I got to sport life and I was just wanting to rap. And then you remember the impact of cannabis? Yeah. So it's like I'm like, I don't have any shame. You know how real MCs, they always gotta over explain their music? Yeah. They, in this day and age. They gotta go, they gotta really break Yeah, it but back then, thing. if your shit wasn't intricate, if you didn't sound like you was trying to beat the specter deck, you were trash. Nobody even wanted to hear what you were talking about. And so that's the type of stuff I was doing, man. And Sport Life was like, yeah, we gonna, we gonna sit you down. Yeah. Well, they, they supported my raw energy, but it was, they was like, we're going to sit you down, we're going to polish this, we're going to put you in the studio with K Steel, you're going to record the same verse for over two hours until you get it right and stop trying to make it, you know, and you, you what you sound like without the microphone is not what you're going to sound like in the microphone. We're going to catch all the slurs. 
We're gonna catch that little slip of that. But we're gonna do we're just trying to merge words together because you mess, that's not gonna slide. So you know, really was teaching you everything. Yeah, then vitamin D would come in and just make you feel like this big on a champion day. I'm a short man. I was feeling tall. You feel me? All the rest of the homies was confused in the room. They didn't know what to do. I was like, yeah, I know I got the best rest of that. Everybody was like, yeah, you probably been the worst. <laughs> I can't understand shit you're saying. And that, that really is. Oh, bro. Like, okay. And then he's like, anybody can find two different words every bar. What kind of rap were you doing? Like that's why you sound like you're cluttering your raps because you, you're not you're not extending your rhyme pattern. You're not trying to do anything with your rhyme pattern. You're just trying to rhyme and get to the next one. It's like, so you kind of broke your broke oh, your yeah, oh, My mom, my mom. So you still a student in the game? That's dope. So after sporting life, is it black gorilla? Mm -hmm. And in the black and rose, I've been seeing uh, man. I don't know, man. I, there's, a, there's a good track I went to talk about. Why you gonna talk about it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why you talking about it? Fuck it, man. Uh, the one joint, the, uh, the Bing Stiss or whatever. Uh, which one? We talking about Raz's Green Light or you talking about mine? Oh, shit. We'll talk about Raz's too. I'm talking about yours. Yeah, bro. And that uh, was his personal. It was just, it was just like. I, I just I, that let me know, okay, Fade will still take it there if a nigga wanna go at him and want some rap shit. He'll still go at it and he can it seem and we ain't gonna go into detail about nothing, but I feel like you won that battle. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. I feel like you won that battle. If if I feel anybody, like he gets to he gets to walk around with the you know, he put my name on the wall. But I love my liberal state. I love my county, I love yeah. my freedom. I know. You know, I hope that he's continuing to succeed in all his other endeavors. Me too, man. Great. <laughs> right. So, the Raz one, though. Real. I, who was Raz doing that day? What the fuck was... He was just... You can't try to... You can't try to put up a front like that, you know? Bro tried to... Uh, I said bro, not bro. <laughs> the Teletubby. The Teletubby, he tried to pitch it like a... Uh, Yo, if this is what you guys want to try to do, you know, I'm on an anti-bully campaign. And that, he tried to sell, like, yeah, bro. Yeah, he did try to sell the anti-bully campaign, and it really didn't make sense. But he tried to do it like, you know, if you want to respond, and no, bro, no. This is, wait, wait. Like, how it works. This is not love and hip hop, fam. Like, yeah, you don't get this to, not scripted. You don't get you don't to construct this. Like, oh, what are you doing? So yeah, that that situation was just funny to me because I, I feel like you niggas, I feel like that just showed the camp strength, and, and I, it made me think, damn, if the niggas, if you niggas was to come with anything else, I knew it was gonna be super finito. I was just happy then because when I when I did it, I did it by myself. I didn't tell nobody. And you reported it? Yeah, I went in there and shocked the fuck out of Carl Rowe. <laughs> and brainstorm didn't know that I was going to do this shit to this beat. Well, you caught everybody off guard. Oh, yeah, nobody knew what the fuck was coming. But at the same time, so I didn't know either. Who the fuck you recorded that? That's just Carl like, Rowe. Carl Rowe Studio. Oh, so you caught him off guard when you came there? Yeah, he did like, what the fuck is <laughs>
Shout out to what, what's your name, bro? Gemini Jones. Gemini Jones. My manager. Fable's manager. Shout out to yeah. everybody on the man listen team. Man, listen, man, listen, man, 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 listen, man, listen.